morning. Um, yesterday morning, while we were moving in uh, to the session, myself, Gavin, and a few others, Gavin uh, into, made a statement which I have coined into a simplistic uh, definition of uh, the circular economy, which I refer to as the circular economy equation. He mentioned that uh, uh, civil engineers blow it up, mechanical engineers build, while environmental engineers come in to clear the rubbish. <coughs> um, however, uh, we are at a point right now, during the course of this week, we have listened to several uh, presentations um, showing the fact that uh, whilst we have regulations that uh, speak to the operations of large scale and small scale mining and artisanal mining has received the kind of criticism largely being the fact that um, they operate without proper regulation, and uh, this talk I'll give will look at how um, artisanal, mi artisanal mining supports the livelihood of local communities uh, as compared to what um, large-scale mining and the other small-scale mining uh, uh, operations deliver. And I'll, I'm also going to use um, a project that was completed by Artisanal Gold Council in Sierra Leone that uh, from October 2020, we just completed this project um, in June last month. So also, we have, from the presentation Judy made, we received several definitions as to what um, artisanal mining is, and we, are, we have also been made to be aware of the challenges in terms of defining what exactly uh, artisanal mining is. As you look at these two um, pictures, on the left, we see uh, panning, the lady panning go, uh, in the river, whereas the photo on the right-hand side shows you um, a mining operation as well. But both of these are actually referring to um, artisanal and small-scale gold mining. And we also have mentioned that from region to region, uh, countries and regions uh, define what artisanal mining is and what it is not. So I want to now look at um, how artisanal mining is being defined in the Sierra Leone case. The project I mentioned was implemented in Sierra Leone. I want to quickly go through what our definition of artisanal mining is. So the Mines and Minerals Act, which was introduced in 2009 in Sierra Leone, has two sections that talk about um, artisanal and small-scale mining. And so artisanal mining, uh, defined in Part 9 of the Mines and Minerals Act 2009, um, limits artisanal mining to so Sierra Leonean citizens, they can be individuals or cooperatives. Um, in terms of its dimensions, artisanal mining should cover an area not exceeding um, half hectares, which is approximately 0 0.05 square kilometers. It should not go beyond a depth of 10 meters, and the license is issued for one year, which is renewable three times consecutively. And the key problems which this uh, regulation try to also look at are uh, the measures to protect the environment. So artisanal miners are actually uh, expected to rehabilitate the mined out lands where 
uh, they carry out this artisanal mining. And the National Minerals Agency, NMA, is an agency set up uh, by the government to regulate the sector whilst the Mines and Minerals Ministry more or less develops the policies that govern um, the, the, the sector. As compared to artisanal mining, small-scale mining um, involves, well, again, the definition from Part 11 of the Mines and Minerals Act as compared to what artisanal mining looks at, the small-scale mining, um, for you to undertake uh, small-scale mining, you have to provide an application to the Minerals Advisory Board, uh, which approves such licenses um, by the, ministry, the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources. So the, the Minerals Advisory Board consists of professionals who will review uh, this uh, license that is submitted. Whereas for artisanal mining license, you don't have to submit this to the Minerals Advisory Board. Uh, the approval comes through the chiefdom or district level authorities. As opposed to artisanal mining, the Small-scale mining requires an environmental impact assessment to be carried out, and this is approved by the Environmental Protection Agency, Sierra Leone. And for you to have your approval from EPA, your EIA submission, environmental, social, and health impact assessment actually should provide financial assurances against potential liability, and also um, for small-scale mining, you are required to provide a mine closure plan that is costed as part of your application process. Um, Small-scale mining, as opposed to artisanal mining, which is 100% for Sierra Leonean citizens. Um, Small-scale mining requires a minimum of 25% Sierra Leonean ownership, and the license is initially given for three years and also renewable on a three-year basis. And in terms of the area over which small-scale licensing is conducted. Um, the area is limited to one square kilometer and not exceeding a depth of 20 meters. And particularly in the case of Sierra Leone, no underground operations are allowed to happen um, in terms of um, small-scale mining. So this image shows us um, the generally at a broad level how large-scale mining contributes in terms of um, uh, employment, national income, uh, government revenue, exports, foreign direct investment adapted from this. And you have put side by side with this how uh, comparatively what artisanal mining does. I have also mentioned the fact that um, artisanal mining is usually conducted in rural communities we are in 100% indigenous people, and it provides employment to the youth. Uh, Sierra Leone has a very high youthful population, and many of these youths, also in remote uh, locations, don't have, many of them find their only form of employment um, in, in, in artisanal mining. And um, so there is a lot of employment for the youths, uh, women. Uh, widows and they bring the gains they get from artisanal mining is to support their families, provide basic amenities in these rural locations um, where, 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 they are locate, uh, where, where they are situated, so and so on and so forth. You see the comparison. So, in terms of foreign direct investment, um, that is very, very low as you saw from the uh, previous requirements. To, to be involved in artisanal mining. This image shows you a typical um, artisanal mining operation in Sierra Leone, and they are estimated to be over 80,000 artisanal gold miners in Sierra Leone, and nearly all of the gold produced is produced in Sierra Leone is by these um, uh, artisanal miners, largely because we have two large-scale gold mining operations that have started over the past two years. Um, so but from existing records, 
the artisanal sector produces um, most of what uh, the gold. It's primarily alluvial, but increasingly hard rock is being mined. Um, so most of the resources that would be easily available in certain parts of the country, um, some of them are fastly being depleted, but also in addition to mining along the rivers and floodplains, uh, the miners also do mine um, hard rock on the terraces uh, of the mineralized hills. And I didn't put in a slide showing um, how they, they, they crush some of this hard rock, but um, in Jyoti's presentation, some of you would recall um, a slide that showed uh, two kids, more or less, that were using mortar and pestle to uh, crush the hard rock. I would need to speak about that when I am talking about um, technology that these artisanal miners have embraced to replace that manual crushing. So the sector is predominantly informal. The artisanal miners um, don't keep records of uh, their winnings. They uh, operate from hand to mouth, as we would call it. And it's actually an engine for rural development. I have mentioned that. Um, so a town called Baumau, uh, which is in the south of Sierra Leone. Um, it's an example of a community that has evolved over the years uh, purely based on the proceeds from artisanal mining. It's, called, it's now as a, a large-scale gold mining operator, but uh, they are also yet to go into production. So this is um, a map of Sierra Leone that shows you the distribution of artisanal gold mine in sight. So the yellow spots you would see uh, are the locations where these artisanal mining sites are located on the major greenstone belts in Sierra Leone, the, the local group in the northwest. Uh, we have the Sula Mountains in the north, the Nimini Hills in the east, Nimini Hills, Gori Hills, Kamboi Hills, and Kangari Hills. They are all in the east. Uh, in, in Kono, you have the Nimini Hills, in Kailang, you have the Gori Hills and the Kangari Hills uh, in Kenema, um, in Bo, Kenema. So this shows you, and this map also shows you the fact that um, many of these areas, as I already mentioned, are in the rural parts of Sierra Leone, and they are difficult to access in many instances. And you see the distribution of the, the, the red circles show you the areas where the artisanal gold project, which I will be talking about in the next few slides, um, what, it, what, what the work we carried out and what were the major outcomes in terms of helping these artisanal miners align themselves to uh, what we refer as sustainable, uh, sustainable uh, mining. So... We have the artisanal miners, as I have already mentioned, right across Sierra Leone. And we have three key policy documents uh, established by the government. Uh, the medium-term national development plan, uh, which the government, this government introduced from 2018 to 2023, which, among other things, focuses on the artisanal mining uh, sector as a key driver for uh, employment and uh, sustainability of livelihoods for people in rural communities. We have an artisanal mining policy for Sierra Leone, uh, which was also introduced in 2018, which also has a focus on um, formalization, ensuring that artisanal miners comply with existing um, international uh, best practice and regulations, and also the diagram um, on the bottom right there shows you a document which was prepared um, in 2019 by the Environmental Protection Agency, Sierra Leone, um, which was focused on reducing the uh, amount of mercury used in artisanal gold mining. It came as a result of... Uh, um, Sierra Leone becoming a signatory to the Minimata Convention in uh, 2016. 
And so uh, countries who are part of this global treaty have a responsibility to develop a national action plan on um, reducing use of mercury in artisanal gold mining. Of course, mercury has uh, adverse uh, health effects, uh, both to human health and to the environment. So the ENGAGE project, which um, uh, is enabling and growing responsible artisanal gold enterprises in Sierra Leone, um, is therefore set in order to ensure that the artisanal mining activities in describing the activities that we implemented through this project will show you some of the interventions that will ensure that um, the miners comply with these existing policies set by government and which will also ensure that they continue to have uh, their livelihoods and support their families and their communities. So this is the enabling and growing responsible artisanal gold enterprises project that was um, implemented, as I already mentioned, from 2020 to June last month. Um, it was funded by the European Union and the German uh, Corporation and um, GIZ and uh, the Mano River Union were also partners with Artisanal Gold Council in implementing. So again, the diagram shows you the miner uh, washing the carpet from the mining process. So um, in the, in, in, during, the post, during the stage of processing the gold, uh, these carpets are used on boxes, which are sluice boxes, and uh, the figure with the man's hand there is showing you gold that has been squeezed, uh, mixed with mercury, and it's put on the scale as shown there, and that other diagram shows you a group of artisanal miners. So this ENGAGE project was implemented as part of the European Union's regional resource government in West Africa uh, with the approach of um, improving sustainability on the three principles, economic sustainability, social, environmental, and social and environmental sustainability. So in, in implementing this project, we use a scorecard adapted from the Planet Gold project that was done in the Philippines and several criteria are shown, we are evaluated, um, governance, technical requirements, potential artisanal gold beneficiaries, mercury use, how gold trade and supply chain happens, um, financial needs and opportunities, and that, you get the overall score, but you are, from that overall score is subtracted um, security and safety issues which may be of uh, significance in both areas that we assessed. Uh, Kumau is in Kono, in the eastern part of Sierra Leone, whereas Baumau is in the southern part of Sierra Leone. And when we evaluated the scores, we, eva we realized that Baumau, both districts, um, scored better, and so that was the location where we implemented the project. So the key findings from this study that we carried out, we found out that, of course, many of these things we already uh, know about the sector, but they also were reinforced during our study. Low awareness of the risk of mercury use amongst miners. So um, the miners were actually using mercury during the processing of gold, oblivious to the um, harmful uh, effects of exposure, acute and chronic exposure, and also oblivious to the impact of um, uh, mercury affecting the surrounding surface water sources. I've also mentioned the fact that in these rural locations, particularly in Sierra Leone, there is very little access to pipe borne water. And in many instances, uh, surface water are the main sources of water for drinking and other domestic uses. So the miners were not aware of any of these effects. And um, some of the worst practices uh, the miners used, I showed you a photo in which the miner had um, gold on his hand with, uh, mixed with mercury. Uh, this 
Mercury, when the gold is mixed with mercury in that way, they would burn it in the open to uh, release the mercury and the gold remains. But in the process of doing that, they do this open burning in their homes, which is part of the worst practices which um, need to be eliminated. Um, and burning mercury in the open um, releases elemental mercury, which exposes human beings to um, various um, health issues in that situation, particularly uh, women and children. Um, so they we are not aware of all of these uh, risks involved with mercury use, both at the site. And the point also to note is the fact that these miners take home the mercury amalgam and sometimes they burn it in their homes, you know, in enclosed spaces, which makes it um, danger to them and other uh, passers-by. So complex local business arrangements rely on um, 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 equipment rentals, no records of revenue sales, conflict with large-scale operators, um, when we started this project, and there are also examples of conflict with LSM operators for other commodities. Gold is not the only community commodity mined in Sierra Leone. You also have coltan and, and, and diamonds. But specifically, during our assessment of both Komao and Baumao as the select communities, Komao, the miners in Komao, the artisanal miners in Komao were operating within a property that is now being uh, held by a Chinese company. And um, in that situation, um, the company asked them out, and there were even armed guards who were deployed on the site to ensure that uh, uh, they leave the property. So that conflict is there. Equally with Baumau, we started evaluating and working with miners, but the area where these miners were located was later taken over by a large-scale operator who has also asked them out. So we had to re-evaluate another location within uh, the same board district for project implementation. So gender-based access to mineral ores. So there are certain sites, particularly in Baumau, where women would not be allowed to, to work due to some traditional uh, norms uh, prevalent in those areas. So um, this is where I also wanted to refer to the, the, the photograph um, from Jyoti's presentation. This is an equipment. These are milling machines that um, have been. So as part of our findings, I am, we noticed that these machines are now being used by the artisanal miners in terms of crushing the hard rock material which they are now more and more mining. Um, we understand that these uh, equipment were initially introduced for, into the agriculture sector, but quickly the miners realized that uh, it saves time and uh, energy to crush uh, large volumes of ore just using the mortar and pestle. So these equipment have now been introduced over the past five years before then you would see none of this. It would just be manual pounding and crushing of the ore. And so this is now prevalent across most mine in sites. And so, again, a good point to note with this is the fact that there are certain people who are not miners at all, but because they see that uh, across the mine sites, across Sierra Leone, uh, miners prefer this method of crushing uh, large volumes of material, People will buy these equipment and bring them to mining areas wherein miners can bring their ore and they process the ore and then they pay them either in cash or in kind in terms of gold recovered afterwards and so on. So another thing we, we notice is the fact that um, the tailings that the miners generate from their mining operations are usually reprocessed uh, sometimes up to four times which implies that, of course, they are losing a lot of the gold in their processing system, and also there were no health, safety, and environmental uh, protocols. So um, what this project, Enabling and Growing artisanal, Responsible Artisanal Gold Mining Enterprises, has done, among many other things, um, we, Sierra Leone, the existence of 
miners' cooperatives for artisanal miners is not very popular. It is now being introduced. And so um, during our implementation of the project in Baumau, we were able to engage 164 artisanal miners who have now formed two cooperatives. And um, these cooperatives are registered with the Bo District Council at the district level, as I mentioned, um, regulation of artisanal mining in as much as any enemy uh, is a national instrument, but you, in, the, in, the, in the registration of the, of the cooperatives is done at the district level. And also, um, they have been registered with the Ministry of Social Welfare, and also bank accounts have been opened for each of these cooperatives. And we will soon see how we got about forming the cooperatives. Um, in addition, with uh, being registered with the district council as cooperatives, the each so we have two cooperatives, um, one with in excess of 50 miners uh, registered, another with 35 miners. So we have helped them to acquire three artisanal uh, licenses, and you see a diagram on the right hand side showing. Um, an example of the artisanal license, which provides details of the, the, the person representing the, the cooperative, in this case, was the, 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 the chairperson. Each cooperative has an executive. And so uh, personal details, the coordinates of their artisanal sites, uh, 0 0.05 um, square kilometers where they operate, and other details and surface rent is also paid to the chiefdom authorities for use of the land where they are mining. So the enabling and growing uh, responsible artisanal gold enterprises in Sierra Leone project, as part of delivering this project and getting to formation of these cooperatives, several training um, sessions were carried out uh, with, with the, for the local miners. Um, the project introduced a set of equipment which the miners are now using to process gold without having to use mercury. And so this um, figure shows uh, Sixto Aguero on the bottom um, left there, the AGC chief um, engineer. Of course, the Senate Gold Council has implemented several of these projects um, across the world. They are based in Canada. What a project in the Philippines, Mongolia, other parts of South America, West Africa, Sierra Leone, um, Guinea, Burkina Faso, and so on. So these local miners have been trained with the equipment we have installed, and they, they are now using this equipment as I speak, and um, they were also involved in the setting up of the equipment. In addition to setting the, up the equipment, we uh, the project engaged the mining engineering department at the Frobe College, where I also teach, to assist with the uh, installation and training for, of, of this equipment. Um, initially, we were supposed to have hired uh, a mine project engineer, mineral processing engineer, to have done this uh, task. We put out several adverts, but we couldn't find an individual within Sierra Leone. And it would have been the case that we would have imported someone from Ghana or some other nearby location. Uh, but eventually, um, establishing the relationship with the mining engineering department ensures that uh, there is local knowledge um, of the equipment. And also, in addition, with uh, Sixto Aguero came in to work alongside these individuals and and the, the, the I mean six to left with full confidence knowing that um, the the miners and the engineers from the department are able to provide some ongoing support. He does not need to be flying in to Sierra Leone or some other individual who would have been the prime um, person leading this. In addition to that training of using the equipment, we trained the artisanal miners, so a select group of miners was uh, uh, as a kind of training of trainers activity. We trained 30 miners, 23 male, 7 women, 
we are trained um, in injury prevention and safer mining practices using classroom and field-based training sessions. So in addition to uh, uh, the knowledge about mercury, we train them with regards to um, manual handling uh, um, and several other uh, things they need to know in terms of occupational safety and then they are managing the environment. Why the need to use PPEs? Because in many instances, these miners consider PPEs as inconvenient and so on and so forth. But um, this photo shows you, in, in addition to training them, we provided them with um, uh, hand gloves and um, 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 Wellington boots. And in as much as many of them feel in well mentioned that they would feel inconvenient using these equipment they they are also willing to uh, continue to embrace the idea now that they know some of these things so we we it's a good thing that uh, they are able to have them and then um, continue using them also we so this was one of the key activities okay Yes, business skills training. Um, we, we, as I already mentioned, the miners would undertake, the Sarah miners would undertake their activities um, without proper planning and uh, management such that they are unable to account for the proceeds or show you any records of gains or winnings they have had over the time they have been mining. So uh, business skills training was conducted um, for this, we, we outsourced. Um, you would see the two ladies in the center there are uh, experts in this field that were brought in to target. Uh, so in this training, 37 minors, 20 men, and 17 women were given training in business skills. Um, the photo on the, at the bottom there, of course, both photos are in the community where we have installed the project, so a range of topics. We are, we, are, we, are, we are presented, and as you see, the last point there, uh, organizing into business associations and business plans. So two of, during this training, um, we had three small groups that were established. The miners established themselves into three groups. One was all men, the other all women, and the other group was mixed, but the names they generated for there are small groups. Two of the names of these groups were sustained and eventually became registered um, as cooperatives. We also had training um, on gender issues. Um, this was done in Baumau, where you can see there was a very, very good turnout. And um, again, it was very um, participatory and basic gender concepts. Uh, barriers to gender equality, and the people in this community really understand the fact, as I already mentioned, this community, there are norms preventing women from operating in, in, in certain areas, and their feedback was very uh, meaningful. And some of them have been introduced into their cooperative documents. We also had a training for health professionals. As I mentioned, um, in as much as the miners handling mercury every day, some of these operations happen 24 hours. They work during the day. Some of them also work at night on cycles. Um, they are exposed to mercury uh, pollution, mercury poisoning, but also we realize that um, the health professionals um, in the medical facilities in the nearby communities are also not aware of the symptoms of the hazards, in fact, related to, to exposure to mercury, uh, poison, to mercury. So we realized that it was important to provide training to healthcare um, um, and professionals. So this was done in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, the Environmental Health Directorate of the Ministry of Health. And by the end of the training, most participants were able to describe the health risks and so on and so forth related. And this is uh, Dr. Marik Marika Kroll from the Artisanal Gold Council who was in Sierra Leone over a three-day period to deliver uh, this training. And as you see there, 
So the, we, we did not only focus on people from the Baumann district, uh, the Bo district, but we brought in uh, participants from the seven districts, as you saw from the map, that is our gold mine in Cuts Across, where um, use of where um, gold mining is done. It, mercury is not used across all sites in Sierra Leone where gold is being mined at Isan Ali, but we also realize that it's a technology that will be quickly introduced in other locations where the, as the miners migrate from place to place. Um, lastly, we conducted a training with the media, of course, over the course of this week as well, we realized that um, the narratives that are put out there as to how artisanal mining happens uh, may not always represent, you know, the, 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 uh, favorably. So we brought in the media. Um, many of them as well were exposed to the use of mercury in artisanal gold mining through this project. So it was a, an awareness raising um, activity. And again, in selecting the participants, we selected, working with um, a local media consortium in Sierra Leone, we selected media outlets across the country as well, uh, because there are community radio stations. Um, we targeted the communities where artisanal mining is uh, mostly prevalent. In summary, um, there are still challenges, but um, we have a set of achievements through this project. Um, the mercury-free production is ongoing. Miners report recovering more gold and spend less time doing so. And so this is what the project um, uh, set out to, to achieve in ensuring by producing gold without use of mercury, um, it will improve put more money into the hands of the miners' pocket, as it were, and also um, they would not be exposed to the health hazards uh, that they get personally and um, also their families and um, uh, effect on the environment. And I already mentioned the training we, we conducted. And profit from the, from the mining facility will be redirected into two community Im improvement investment funds. So this also was introduced into the cooperative documents. Um, because of time, I would not go into every little detail, but um, it was amazing when we did the business skills training and asked them to set out their plans and targets. Uh, most of what the miners wanted was to get money for mining. Uh, for example, this community, we introduced this project. Um, had, it's, it's very, very difficult to access. They have not got a health facility. Uh, the nearest health facility is uh, 10 miles away, and it's right up uh, a very difficult terrain, jungle to access. So they want to provide uh, facility in their, in their communities to improve their livelihood. So um, this is where I will stop. Thank you very much.